Okay, so in this lecture, we'll talk about another important quantum algorithm, which is Grover's algorithm for unstructured search. What does this algorithm do? You could, you could think of this algorithm as searching for a needle in a haystack. Okay, so what's the digital equivalent of a haystack? So the digital equivalent is a very large table. So it's a table with n entries, and what you can do in one step is you can access any one of these entries, and you can look inside this entry and see what's in there. And so we want to think of the, this as a haystack, meaning all but one of these entries consists of hay, something that you're not looking for, and one of these entries, say this green one, you know, in there is the needle, it's the item that you're actually looking for. Unfortunately, these entries are not marked from the outside, so you have to laboriously look through them to find the correct one. So you want to search for this marked entry. How long does this take classically? Well, you know, if you search through the entries in random order, then you'd be pretty unlucky if you don't find it roughly halfway through your search. So it takes you n over 2 expected time. So what we want to know is, is there a much, simp much faster solution quantumly? Can we do something much, much quicker, much more clever using this exponential power of quantum mechanics? And so here's the sort of thing we are hoping for. We are hoping that quantum mechanics gives us some kind of very interesting physical way of maybe you know, think about it as using a giant magnet so that you don't have to search laboriously through this haystack and you just find, the, find your needle very quickly. Okay? It's not going to be this quick. It's not going to be in a single step, but it's going to be still a very clever algorithm. Okay, so why is, you know, why is searching for, for a needle in a haystack such an important problem? So let me just give you a very brief introduction to this. Um, it's, um, uh, for those of you who know, this might help you make the connection. If you don't know, don't worry about it. We'll see more about this later. So there's a whole class of problems called the NP-complete problems, which are extremely important problems in, from a computational viewpoint. Not only in computer science, but in every discipline of science, you know, physics, chemistry, etc. So a quintessential such problem is what's called satisfiability. So you're given some Boolean formula on n variables. So think of this as f of x1 through xn. And these variables take on binary values, 0 or 1. So there are two to the little n such values, and call that capital N. Now, so for each such assignment of zeros and ones to x1 through xn, you can evaluate this, you're given this Boolean formula, you can evaluate it, and it evaluates to either zero or one, also called true or false. And so what we want is an assignment of zeros and ones to, to the xi's, which is called a truth assignment, which makes f evaluate to 1, which is also called satisfying the formula. So there are two to the n possible configurations, which is capital N. That's this table of size capital N. And let's say there's only one such satisfying assignment. That's this green one. And that's what we're looking for. So it turns out that there are thousands of problems, literally thousands of problems, tens of thousands of problems, which are computationally equivalent to satisfiability. And so if you solve one of these quick problems quickly, you can solve all of them quickly. These are problems that are classically believed to be hard. They are at least as hard as factoring, much harder. OK, so how do we deal with this in the quantum setting? How well can we do? Well, Grover's algorithm can solve this problem not in n time, but in square root n time. So this is a quadratic speed up over the classical algorithm. Remember that capital N is 2 to the little n. Okay. So if we were thinking of this as a satisfiability problem, then the size of the problem 
is little n. This is of satisfiability. And then square root of capital N is 2 to the little n over 2. OK. So in other words, you know, even though Grover's algorithm gives you this quadratic speed up, and it's a very significant speed up, it still leaves you with an exponential time algorithm for satisfiability. And we'll see more about this in a, in a, in a later lecture. So let's say the problem again formally. So you're given this function, a Boolean function from 0 to n minus 1. The hardest case of this, and we are, we are looking for an x such that f of x equal to 1. The hardest case of this is when there's exactly one such satisfying x. There's exactly one x such that f of x equal to 1. There's exactly one needle in the haystack. And then you could ask, well, how is this function given to us? Well, the way the function is given is in the form of a circuit for f. So it takes as input x, and it outputs f of x. And so classically, what can you do to try to find such a satisfying assignment? You could just try going through the possible assignments, all the 2 to the little n of them. So we are thinking of, so there, this takes as input little n bits, outputs a single bit. Quantumly, what do we get to do? Well, quantumly, we can make up a quantum circuit for f. Takes as input x, a bunch of zeros, outputs x, f of x, a bunch of zeros. And so the whole point here is that we can evaluate x and f in superposition. So we can evaluate sum over x, alpha x, x. 0 goes to sum over x, alpha x, x, f of x.